I am Anthony L. Elmore, President and Founder of the Proud Black Buddhist World Association. My lecture today is called Buddhism and Christmas. How is it that the 20 over almost 3,000 year old philosophy of Buddhism coincides with Christmas or how should we react to the holiday of Christmas? We at the Proud Black Buddhist bring to you a black perspective of Buddhism and Christmas. Now, we at the Proud Black Buddhist World Association practice the Buddhist teachings taught by the 13th century Japanese sage Nichiren Shonen. Nichiren Shonen teaches that only the Lotus Sutra is the correct teachings of the Buddha Shakyamuni. Now, please understand that there is a clear and distinct difference between those who practice the Lotus Sutra and those who practice Buddhism. We at the Proud Black Buddhist World Association practice the Lotus Sutra and not Buddhism as we know in the traditional sense. You see, Shakyamuni Buddha, who lived in ancient India around 624 BC, he taught that his highest teachings was the Lotus Sutra and everyone was this was to discard all that he taught other than the Lotus Sutra. See the Lotus Sutra deals with the law of cause and effect. And that is what the Lotus Sutra teaches. Now that Nitrin writes in a go show. Now his first go show was called On Attaining Buddhahood. Now, on attaining Buddhahood, Nichiren writes, quote, The Lotus Sutra is the king of sutras, true and correct, in both word and principle. Its words are the ultimate reality, and this reality is the mystic truth, or Myoho. It is called the mystic law because it reveals the principle of the mutually inclusive relationship of a single moment of life and all phenomena. That is why this sutra is the wisdom of all Buddhas. Now, Nichiren lets us know that the Lotus Sutra is the correct Buddhist teachings. He writes further in the Gosho, quote, you must never think that any of the 80,000 sacred teachings of Shakyamuni Buddha's lifetime or any of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas of the Ten Directions, the Three Existences are outside yourself. Your practice of the Buddhist teachings will not relieve you of the sufferings of birth and death in the least unless you perceive the true nature of your life. If you seek enlightenment outside yourself, then your performing even 10,000 practices and 10,000 good deeds will be in vain. Now, let us put this in common sense terms. Nietzsche writes that you must never think any of the 80,000 sacred teachings of Shakyamuni Buddha's lifetime or any other Buddhist and Buddhist houses of the Ten Directions and the Three Existences are outside yourself. This means that your everyday life is Buddhism. See, Buddhism is not going up to some mountain and meditating, nor is Buddhism what the Japanese Nichiren Shoshu teach organization taught me that I must go all the way to Japan and see a block of wood called the Daigo Hanzan and this is Buddhism. This is not what the Buddha teaches. Please understand 
that the Lotus Sutra teaches us that Christmas is Buddhism because Christmas is our life. The Buddha says, do not look for the 80,000 Buddhist teachings outside your life. That's what it means. Now, there's a Gosho called the gift of rights. And it says, the truth had lies in the affairs of this world. The Golden Light Sutra states, quote, to have a profound knowledge of this world is itself Buddhism. The Nirvana Sutra states, quote, all of the non-Buddhist scriptures and writings in society are themselves Buddhist teachings and not non-Buddhist teachings. This is what the Nirvana Sutra says. Now, further, he says, when the great teacher Milo compared these passages with warrant from the six volume of the Lotus Sutra that reads, quote, no world affairs of life or work are ever contrary to the true reality. He goes on further. He revealed their meanings and pointed out that all that the first two sutras are profound, since their meaning is still shallow and fails to approach that of the Lotus Sutra, they relate to secular matters in terms of Buddhism, Whereas the Lord of Suits explains that in the end, secular matters are the entirety of Buddhism. Christmas is your life. Christmas is Buddhism. Now, if you want to put up a Christmas tree, a Santa, or do all of the things that Christmas involves, then you are really practicing Buddhism. Now, let's take this thing further. In the ghost show, it's called Winter Always Turns Into Spring. It says, at the time of his extinction, the world-honored one of great enlightenment lamented. He says, now I am about to enter Nirvana, the only thing that worries me is King Adra Shatru. Buddhisattva Kayapa then asked him, quote, Since the Buddha's mercy is impartial, you regret and dying should stem from compassion for all living beings. Why do you single out King Adra Shatru? The Buddha replied, quote, Suppose a children has suppose a couple has seven children, one whom fall ill. Though the parents love all their children equally, they worry most about the sick child. Unquote. See, King Ajashutra gave the Buddha living hell. He first of all, this king killed his father. He followed the Buddha's cousin, Davadatta, who was an evil man. He killed the nun. The, the Buddha had to eat horse feather, feather. I mean, he gave the Buddha the greatest possible hell that's incomprehensible. And even with all of the horrible and horrific things he did to the Buddha, the Buddha had compassion for King Ajashatru. And what this teaches us in Buddhism, that Buddhism is a religion of compassion. When the time of Christmas time comes around, it is a time to show love. It is the time to show compassion. That is how Buddhism works. So Buddhism and Christmas goes together like a hand in glove. It is a time to forgive. It is a time to love. So when you practice in this love and this compassion, you are practicing Buddhism. But let me give you just a little bit more documentation on this. There's a ghost show called, and for the SGR members, it's called um, Expedient Means and Lifespan Chapter. And for you who are Nichiren Shu, 
It's called the Gosui Gosho. Now, in this Gosho, Nitron writes, quote, when we scrutinize the sutras and treat us with care, we find there is a teaching about precepts known as following the customs of the region that corresponds to this. The meaning of this precept is that so long as no seriously offensive act is involved, then even if one were to depart to some slight degree from the teaching of Buddhism, it would be better to avoid going against the manners and customs of the country. This is a precept expounded by the Buddha." Unquote. Now, what the Buddha teaches us that it is okay to deviate from Buddhism a little bit if instead of going against a custom or a land we who are in the proud black Buddhists, we grew up into the church, our families go to the church. We have to involve ourselves with people who are non-Buddhists. It's okay to get with our families, to do things with our families, follow the customs. It is better to follow the customs and hang out with your family and to show how broad Buddhism is then they sit back and says, oh, I can't do something because I am Buddhist. This is not what the Buddha teaches. The precept of the Buddha. It is called Zuyo Bini or following the local laws and customs of the land. And certainly, one of the biggest holidays in America is Christmas. So we who are Buddhists, we should embrace Christmas. Instead of the saying, oh, I cannot practice, those who don't practice Buddhism, they are Buddhists. But we practice the Lotus Sutra, and the Lotus Sutra teaches us that by embracing Christmas and embracing the local laws and customs of our land, we are actually embracing Buddhism. As long as we only slightly, very little bit, it's kind of like it's kind of like uh, someone being so crazy by saying, oh, I cannot be into your wedding because your wedding is in a Christian church and I'm going to be in front of a Christian minister and I don't want to hear this. If you have a friend who is getting married and they're Christian and you're Buddhist, why not go to your friend's wedding? Why not be a part of that wedding? That is not what Buddhism teaches you. Why not go into that church? Buddhism teaches us the middle way. And it's the same with Christmas. I've heard people say that Christmas is a Christian holiday and I do not practice this. But this ain't what the Buddha teaches. Many people go away from their homes and join their families for the Christmas holiday. And you may be in a real strict Christian family and they say, well, on Christmas Day we're going to go to church and pray. So what? You go with your family. It is better to follow the precept and customs of following traditions with your family than to sit back saying, oh, I'm some Buddhism, I got to go up into the mountains. Buddhism is your everyday life. Now, let me bring this to a con conclusion. Now, those of us who are African American, we encourage you to embrace Christmas. But not only embrace Christmas, but embrace the entire holiday. Now, we who are African American, we got Christmas to embrace. And the day after Christmas, we got a holiday, an African American holiday called Kwanzaa. And those of you who live in towns where they practice Kwanzaa, look it up. Embrace Kwanzaa too. You know, there's a thing in, in Kwanzaa called the... Uh, Nugu so Saba. And it's the seven days or the seven principles of Kwanzaa which corresponds to Buddhism. The first day of Kwanzaa is called Yamoja. That means unity. Buddhism teaches unity. 
The second of quantum is called Kucha Chakalia. That means self-determination. What that means in common everyday terms that we don't have to look to no Japanese or no Asian. We have self-determination. We determine how we're going to practice Buddhism. The third day is called Yajima. It means working together. And the fourth day of Kwanzaa is called Yajama. It means supporting each other. And the fifth day of Kwanzaa means near. It means purpose. And the sixth day of Kwanzaa means Kuanga. It's called Kuanga. It means creativity. Like get with your Buddhist practice and be creative. Have a have, on Christmas Day, get together and chat and practice Buddhism together, do gongyo together. So we have a Christmas gongyo. That's what Buddhism teaches. And the seventh day of Kwanzaa means Imani. Imani means faith. Faith is Buddhism. So now you got it. Buddhism and Christmas. I'm Anthony Elmore.